On this episode, it's all about Orphic and the app. On this episode, it's going to be all about downloading and the operation of the Orphic app to control the ocean fixture that they just recently sent to me. So instead of going to the tank, let's go to the phone and see how it's done. So here we are by my Android phone and I, like I said, this works on both Android and uh, Apple devices. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the App Store depending on which device you have. In my case, it's the Google Play Store. You can put in the search for uh, Orphic, and you can see right here, this is what I have. I've already installed the uh, app onto my phone, but you're going to scroll down the list till you get to this one with the black square around it, and click into it, and then just hit the install and let it uh, install on your phone. Since I already have the app, I'm just going to hit open and let it open up. There is a whole set of instructions that will be available um, from the website that will show you how to enable your Bluetooth and also um, what the default password is. All you really have to do is once you open it up and get to the device list, you just swipe down to refresh the list and as long as your Bluetooth is enabled, it will search for the light and you will see it hit the list. Now just by tapping it, it will connect to the light and then uh, you are ready for your next step which is the features of the app. Once you use the password for the first time, you'll never need it again. Uh, and after the device list is refreshed and you see your light on the list, by just holding down on your phone for about two seconds, a pop-up will occur where we, you will be able to uh, rename the light whatever you want. In my case, I named it Orphic One. Now, if you have multiple lights um, to connect to, they will also be shown in the device list. Once you have this set, you're able to go to the next section. This is the schedule section. This shows you a graph of what basically what your program is going to do throughout the day, as well as to this shows these little buttons that you can depress. And the first one is a preview button. What that will do is in a short amount of time, it'll show you exactly what your program set to do. So this way you can troubleshoot any spots that may be, you know, not set to your liking. So here you can see once the button was depressed, my light comes to life and starts going through what the program is for the light for throughout my day. It goes from your basically a sunrise to what I have as set as a sunset to when the light turns off at the end of the night. I'm really impressed by the fact that you can do this because in a short amount of time you can troubleshoot if the way you programmed your light is going to work well throughout the day or whether there's spots that may be, you know, one step is higher than the other. So now the next button that we're going to push is, as you can see by the dark blue highlight, is the lightning mode. Once this is depressed, it's going to put the ocean into a lightning dem demonstration. As you can see, it's pretty dramatic when the light comes to life and fills the room with white light and the tank as well. Now here you can see what's going on in the tank when the lightning happens. Now you'll notice that half the tank is going into the lightning storm. That's only because that I only have one fixture for now, and uh, but it's pretty dramatic how it works. Now after the lightning, it's cloudy. So what you do is you hit this button. The light will very subtly ramp up and down in color to simulate uh, clouds rolling in front of the sun during the day, as you can see here. So now it's bright and sunny outside, but the clouds soon roll in. The tank starts getting a little darker, and it simulates uh, clouds throughout the day rolling across the sky over the reef.
here is a shot of the light itself while it's in this mode. You can tell by the reflection of the light against the wall how uh, the, the, it's a very subtle change. Sometimes dramatic, sometimes subtle, but the simulation that you see in the tank is very spot on as far as the way clouds would roll across a reef. Now, on the bottom, there are two buttons. One is uh, shows a thermometer. The other one shows fan OK. I was really happy to see this in that it you could change the temperature from Fahrenheit to centigrade just by tapping it. And it shows how hot the light is, but also it shows you how your fan is doing, whether it's working or if it's not. The next tab is going to be your spectrum. Here is displayed the spectral distribution of the six channels from 0% to 100% without saving it. Uh, basically what you do is you can take your finger, hit the different channel, slide it up and down, and watch how the light responds to it. I was really amazed at how quickly the response time is between the app and the light itself. Sliding it up and down will change each channel accordingly, and it's almost in real time. It's, it's just a very, I would say, a millisecond in lag time between the communication of the devices. Now, I really wish my editing software would allow me to inset this into the last frame, but this is basically what was going on as I was sliding the sliders up and down, going through the different channels and colors, and um, the response time, like I said, was pretty dramatic how quickly it responded to the app. Now right next to color is depth. What that does, it displays the depth in meters and also intensity uh, percentage of the light. By sliding the, the slider back and forth in depth, will change how much white or blue is in the light at a given time. The deeper the depth, the more blue light uh, will occur as it would in um, the wild. Also intensity will give you how much the intensity of the light there is at a given point. Now another way of thinking of it is at 0% you're going to have very little light coming from the light and at 100% it's going to be a stronger light, a brighter light. But the depth controls the shading as far as whether it's going to be white or, or towards the blue range. As you can see right here, I'm playing with the, the depth and you can see how the light is turning more towards the blue side of things and now uh, coming back the other way it gets a more whitish hue to it. Here is the intensity. You can see by the wall the, um, the amount of light that's being put out at the certain depth I have it set for. It's a fun thing to play with and I did, did take a while uh, going up and down the scale just to see what the light would do. Uh, so it's definitely something to look out for. The next tab is schedule. Here is where you will uh, schedule your lighting program and it's divided into two modes. One is easy, one is advanced. Uh, you will also find settings here for acclimation programs and also lighting effects. Now starting with the easy mode you can program the lights all at the same time by just picking an area of the world uh, which is closest to you. Um, there's many different areas such as Hawaii here you see the Caribbean Sea and it shows you what your sunrise, sunset and your weather is going to be like for that particular setting. Now um, the Caribbean Sea is most closest to me so just by hitting submit, it uploads it to the light, the light shuts off and then turns back on and you know that the program has been set. Now you, if you lived in Australia and you would, you would tap it and here is the Great Barrier Reef. It shows the sunrise, the highest intensity of the light spectrum during the day. Uh, moonlight mode, light will be turned off at what time and also the weather condition for that day. Again, by just hitting the submit, the light turns off and then turns back on and it will be set to that lighting schedule. Now in case the time for sunrise and sunset doesn't match, you could tap the uh, each individual category and scroll the number wheel until it meets the area, uh, or time rather, that suits your area of the world. Just by clicking OK, you can see the sunrise has now changed. Tap the sunset, scroll through the wheel, and set it to um, 
what time your sunset is. Now you can see here, just by hitting submit, it now updates it, and then at the bottom it, sh it shows you how the update has been completed and your times are now set. The next area in this section is going to be the advanced area. Uh, advanced mode is an option for more experienced hobbyists for, or for those who wish to personally customize the setup. Here you will be able to customize manually each of the six light channels, the intensity of the light, and also the times uh, of each channel. You can program up to eight ocean units at the same time. If you have more than eight units, you can program and save and upload the first units and then program the rest of the units after that. Now also one other thing that I didn't mention before is that there are up to 12 events allowed in this section. So you can program each individual step the way you want up to 12 sections from the point that the light comes on to the point that the light goes out. Once you've completed your program, simply hit the save button you'll see there'll be all kinds of areas that say blank field. Click on one of these, hit save, and it'll allow you to rename it. In this case, I renamed it test. Now just simply hit save, and now the program is saved. To load it, all you have to do is hit the load button, click the item, in this case test, hit load, and now your lighting program is ready to upload to your light. Next step, hit upload. You can see it'll automatically come to life, and then it'll tell you when your upload is completed. The next area is the settings area, and in this area you can find a really good and useful item, that's acclimation. Just by checking the box, you can change the intensity of the light and set it to from 0 to 50% during a certain date range. Uh, by doing this, you allow your corals to get used to the new light after it's been hung above the tank. Also in this area, you could add cloud and lightning effects just by simply checking off the boxes and then hitting the submit button and the fixture will now be set into an acclimation mode. So that's a brief overview of the Orphic Ocean app that's available um, when you purchase the light. Uh, there is a few more things in, in the app that you can discover along the way. I would say download it, uh, play with it, and learn how to operate the light through the app. Like I said, the response time between the app and the light is phenomenal, and I really enjoy going into this and just playing around seeing what the capabilities of the light are. You find that the light has a lot more capabilities than you would ever realize once it comes out of the box. So that's basically it for the video. My next video is going to show the installation and get my overall opinion of the light since I've had it. Uh, be sure to join us if you're a new subscriber. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave comments down below. So as always, this is Scott, and I will see you next time around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.